Rincey and this is Rincey Reads. Today I'm going to be talking about two Agatha Christie novels. The first one is The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, which this doesn't have a dust cover on it, so you guys can maybe read that there. And then the other one is Murder at the Vicarage. I had picked these two books up at random at a used bookstore. I had been wanting to read Agatha Christie novels for a while now. The only one I've read is And Then There Were None, which is might be her most famous one. I just happened to stumble upon these two. They were the only two in this style, and I really like this dust cover edition of it. I love the font that's used on these books, and I kind of like the colors. And if you look up, you know, this version of the book, they're all in this style and they all have different colors and I think they're really beautiful and I would totally like buy a set of these if I could. Just in case you don't know anything about Agatha Christie, she is a very well-known British crime fiction author. She has sold literally 4 billion copies of her books worldwide and it said that she actually has the highest number of book sales behind the Bible and William Shakespeare, that's what her estate claims. Two of her most famous series are the Detective Perot series and the Miss Marple series and these just happen to be one of each. This one is Detective Perot and this one is Miss Marple. I wasn't really sure which one of these books to read first and so I decided to just read them in published order and so I started with The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. I didn't really know what to expect going into it because I again I had only read one Agatha Christie novel and when I read it it was when I was in high school. So I was expecting it to be kind of something like that where you know there are crimes that happen throughout the entire novel but this one there's just the one crime that happens at the beginning and then the rest of the novel is spent just figuring out suspects and who did it. There were so many characters and I was having trouble keeping track of everything that was going on and there came a certain point where I was getting frustrated and I just kind of wanted to know who did it. I thought it was this was just gonna be like an okay novel and then the ending happened and I was like blown away. I wasn't expecting the ending to this book to be what it was. I don't know why. I thought it was going to be simpler than that. I don't know how to talk about this novel without doing spoilers so I'm just gonna leave it at that. So I definitely love 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 this book for the ending itself like that made this whole book worth it. When I finished The Murder of Roger Ackroyd I kind of wanted to jump right into The Murder at the Vicarage so I picked up this book and I was like okay I know what's going on with these stories now and I can jump right into it. And again I'm gonna remind you that the first book that I read was a Detective Perot series and the second one is a Miss Marple series but I really didn't know anything about either of these characters or the the story set up or anything like that beforehand because I never read anything really about it because I didn't want to spoil myself. In The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, Detective Perot is a private investigator that's hired to work on this murder. In this book, I thought Miss Marple was going to be the same thing, a private investigator who worked on this crime, but in actuality Miss Marple is just like a common citizen who is really observant and pays attention. Also this is the first book in the Miss Marple series as opposed to The Murder of Roger Ackroyd is a couple books into the Detective Perot series so there is a little bit of backstory that they make reference to like they kept making a reference to a specific character who I'm assuming was his assistant in an earlier book but I mean none of that is really pertinent to this story so it's not like you had to have read the other Perot books. I thought it was really interesting that Agatha Christie decided to make Miss Marple just a regular citizen because I think I just went into it knowing that these are crime novels I just assumed that Miss Marple would be the detective on scene and it would just be a female detective. But in reality it's just an older woman who lives in this town. And I'm really interested to see the other books in the Miss Marple series because I wonder if all of the stories happen in this town or if she travels. I feel like all of these books are going to have the same format where you kind of meet the characters or you hear about the characters in the beginning of the story and then that character dies and then the rest of the story is spent figuring out everyone's motives behind the crime, like why they may have done it, and then you find out why they couldn't have done it, and then in the end there's the reveal. And again, I went into The Murder at the Vicarage having read The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, and so I thought I was, I was spending this novel trying to figure out who actually did it, and trying to see if I could 
figure out what the twist was and I definitely didn't. I'm not really good at that. But with these I definitely didn't and I don't know if that's just me because I'm a person who doesn't read a lot of crime fiction or I read it sporadically so I don't have a lot of experience with it. Maybe if you read a lot of these at once then you would have been able to figure it out but I definitely did it. Now if I were to compare the two books I would say The Murder of Roger Ackroyd definitely had the bigger surprise ending, but I think in general I just like Miss Marple more than Detective Perot. I find Perot to be a little bit off-putting. Both of these books, and I'm assuming all of her books are going to be like this, are told from a first-person perspective, but that person isn't Miss Marple or Detective Perot. So it's like a normal citizen is telling you the story from the outside watching these famous characters famous characters, you know, famous to us, work and do their job and so it's really fun because you can really relate to what's happening because they're just very much the ordinary person watching these famous people where kind of like the Sherlock Holmes series where you're reading the story through the eyes of Watson. If you're someone who has never read an Agatha Christie novel, please go do it. I mean, I want to go and buy as many Agatha Christie novels as possible, specifically in this design because I, again, I really love the font on this, especially on the hardcover, like the silver on the black in this font. It's really nice. I kind of want to buy more of these. And I would, I especially want to pick up more Miss Marple series because like I said, I found her more relatable. I think she was a lot more fun to watch, figure out the crime because she wasn't a detective. So it was really more interesting because a lot of times she's basically figuring out the murder herself but she's very coy, like she's supposed to be an older woman. So a lot of the people and the policemen in the town don't really take her that seriously. Like they just think she's just another gossiping woman in the town who watches everything so she can talk about it with her friends later and things like that. But in reality, she's figuring out this crime better than they are. If you haven't read any Agatha Christie novels, definitely pick these up. I highly recommend both of these. This one is definitely worth picking up for the ending alone. And this one is definitely good because it's a good intro to the Miss Marple series. If you've read any Agatha Christie novels, feel free to leave comments down below about what you think about her or what your favorite books are by her. And if you have any recommendations on other Agatha Christie's I should pick up, please leave those in the comments down below as well. Also, just as a side note, for all of you who are coming to Chicago for LeakyCon, I will not be seeing you there because I won't be going to LeakyCon because it's expensive and I don't have the money or time and also it's sold out by now so it doesn't make a difference. But on Saturday they are opening up the vendor floor and doing some author signings on Saturday afternoon. So I'm going to try to go to that. Hopefully it's not too crazy. So if you happen to be doing that or you just happen to be on the vendor floor between 1 and 3, maybe you'll see me wandering around. But I would think that most of everyone who has actual leaky con passes will be in some sort of panel or something during that time. I can't imagine you just wandering for while everyone else can wander. Like, you can do that when you have your own free time. Anyways, but if you happen to be there, you'll maybe see me there and then hopefully next week I'll have some footage from it or something just so I can talk about it the two hours that I'm allowed in leaky con or a section of leaky con. And then also take some time to enjoy this amazing city. I hope you guys are able to get out of the hotel and explore your right on Michigan Avenue in the middle of everything amazing. So yeah, that's all I have for now and thanks for watching. of Roger Ackroyd, which you can't tell because there's no dust cover on it, so maybe you can read that and that's upside down. I'm gonna redo that. <laughs> that these two books that I picked up are two of those. This one is Detective Perot and this one is Miss Marple. I'm holding this upside down again. <laughs> what is going on?